G'day everyone, this is the first time that I've ever fished in this channel on this channel. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. This is the Mull Whaler channel on one of the many bridge crossings. This is the irrigation channel that feeds off the side of Lake Mull Whaler on the Mull Whaler side or the New South Wales side and goes for miles and miles and miles and miles and breaks up into many different little irrigation channels. Lots of irrigation water comes down this channel. There's quite a few waves on the channel. It looks like a lake. It looks like lake water. And that's because it's such a windy day. And there's such a long straight there. There's so much fetch for the water to build up. For the waves to build up. Anyway, I fished this spot many years ago. And caught carp, redfin and yellowbelly. And I think I might have caught a Murray cod here one night too. Let's get the lines in and see what I can catch tonight. Right now I'm going with the Robbie Fishing Standard Bait Fishing System here. Two rods, both with two Janjuk worms. One with a Patnoster rig and one with a running sinker rig. The Patnoster rig is on the little stumpy rod. That can go just out there. The running sinker rig, I'm just going to put that right on the edge of the current there as it's coming out from under that bridge. Right, both lines are in, it's time to play the waiting game. I've only got about two hours of daylight left. Two windy hours. I'm actually hoping that the breeze drops off before dark and it just quietens right down. Now I've got a couple of messages to reply to on the way here. Rowan from RKJ Fishing messaged me and my young friend Zepp, Zeppelin Allen messaged me. I'll reply to them while I wait for a big fish to come along. Just had a nice bite on the stumpy rod. I've only been here about five minutes, that's a good sign. I just had that nice bite while I was replying to some text messages. I replied to two text messages and then realised that I've got no phone service at all, nothing. So what'll happen, in about an hour's time I'll get a message that says, could not be delivered. <laughs> Gee, something's hitting that, uh, hitting those worms quite hard. It's not a, it's just every now and again a whack whack. But they're quite hard little whacks. Nibble on the running sinker rig here. Oh, getting a nibble on both rigs here. Got him. I've got the one on the Pat Noster rig. What have I got? It's not very big. It's a little, it's a red fin. <laughs> I'm on the board with a red fin. I could fill up that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about it. I can do better. I don't know about here. I don't really know a lot about this spot, but yeah. Anyway, folks, I'm on the board with a channel red fin. I'm on the board with an insane tangle. Uh, how did that happen? I'm ready to go. I might just put a fresh worm on with those mangled worms. Right, I put my line back in. That wasn't a tiny redfin, but it wasn't an overly big one either. If I get a nice redfin, I'll certainly keep it, or a nice yellow belly. I'm just not in the mood for filleting tiddlers at the moment. I want a decent fish. <laughs> I'll check this while I'm at it because it had a bit of a bite before. There was something on that then. Oh, I wonder if there's crayfish in here because that had a bit of a bite. And when I pulled that up there then, there was a resistance, a fair bit of weight, and no worm left. I wonder if there's crayfish in here maybe. Bite in the stumpy rod there. Oh, that was a good bite. Geez, the stumpy rod's getting all the bites. I'm going to check this running sinker rig. It had a bit of a nibble there a second ago. Nothing there. I'm going to put it straight back out. Whoa! I think it's the Patnoster rod again. Got him! Is it another little ready? It feels like it. Doesn't feel like a carp. It is too. It's a bigger one actually. Similar size. Maybe slightly larger. I was uh, just checking the bait on my running sinker rig when that one hit. Where are you hooked, mate? In there. In the mouth of all places. Fish number two. Another nice red fin. Probably 23 centimetres, maybe. Give or take a couple. Oh. On your bike. 
Water in the running sinker here. Whoa, we're fucked up and I'm tangled. Oh, that was a big bite. <laughs> snapped me line. Ah, you snapped me hook off. Oh well. I'd say there was probably a carp, but anyway, that's all happening in the Mulwala Channel. Now we'll put my Pat Noster rig back out here. What happened, I just finished fiddling with the uh, running sinker rig when I caught that red fin, so I put that down in a hurry and the line must have been underneath the rod holder. Then when I struck, I didn't strike properly and the, uh, the fish was pulling and wrapped around here and all hell broke loose and it snapped the line really quick. Whatever it was, was big. Probably a carp. Right, oh, the long rod's rigged, ready to go. And it's got a pattern oster rig on it, just like the other rod. So I've got the, I've got two pattern oster rigs on now. The reason I went with the pattern oster, it's just I find it a bit quicker to tie, a bit easier to tie. And at the moment, I've only got you know, a couple of hours of daylight, probably an hour and a half now, and I'm on a bit of a hot bite here. I'm getting a few bites. I just want to get my line back in as quick as I can. So I went went with the rig that was quickest for me to tie. And in saying that, though, the short rods caught two fish with a pattern oster rig so let's keep waiting that's annoying not having any phone surface here I want to I want to google what's the difference between a channel and a canal the truck's about to come around this bend and ride his jake broke all the way down the hill you listen Brrr. here he comes the road train went through here just before Two full size trailers. Right, -o. here we go, getting the bottom on both rods here. Something's pulling that down. Is that a crayfish? Is there a crayfish in here? We're about to find out. Is it going to be white claws? Gee, it feels crayfishy. It is a huge crayfish. Oh, surely not going to get that all the way up. Look at the size of it. Yep, there is crayfish in here. That was massive. <laughs> well, I can confirm that there are redfin and crayfish in this channel. And the crayfish, or well, at least that one, are enormous. <laughs> at least that one was anyway. <laughs> that was a huge cray. Just thinking about that crayfish, even if it was in season, that crayfish is protected because this is New South Wales. And in New South Wales, there's only two places where you're allowed to actually catch crayfish. And this isn't one of them. So there's no crayfishing season at all in this channel. So that's protected not just by a closed season, but also the fact that it's all permanently closed waterway for crayfishing. And it would have been oversized anyway. It was enormous. Protected by lots of rules, that big one. Just had a real faint little there's something. Not another crayfish on there, is there? Something really softly pulling at that. That's a crayfish, that's a big one. That's a cray snag. Oh good, it got off. When I first got here, I caught those two redfin, had a couple of other bites, had that uh, a bite then took off and snapped the line on the long rod, all in the first little while, and then for the last hour, I have had nothing of that one crayfish, other than that just a couple of really small nibbles and that's it, it's just gone dead. I'm sort of hoping that as the sun sets, a couple of fish might decide to come out and have a feed. Hoping I can pick up something on sunset. Getting another bite on the long rod. It's a very crayfishy looking bite though again. It's a cray. I'll put it in the net, if I can, just so that you can uh, have a look at it. It's a very large crayfish. There he is. Hope he doesn't get off. Right, have a look at the size of this crayfish. This is enormous. Now just for curiosity's sake, I'm going to get a rough measurement. Wow, 145 mil from a eye to a tail. I think it's a her, the tail's all curled up. I'm assuming there's a heap of eggs under there. There are a few eggs under there, but not many. But anyway, have a look at the size of that. That is... An enormous crayfish from an irrigation channel. Wow, I might get a quick photo before I put it back.
I've got a few picks. I don't want to get all the way down there. I'd like to get a bit closer to the water, but anyway, it's as close as I can get. That was so cool. Awesome. 145 millimeters. That crayfish was enormous. Now, normally when I put crayfish back, if they're males, I'll just toss them back. But if they're females and they've got eggs, I like to be as gentle and nurturing as I can and get get right down close to the water. And I couldn't do that on this occasion because it's just not safe enough. These channels, they flow quite fast and they're very deep and they'd be hard to get out of. There's not a lot of spots where you can climb out. So you just got to be a bit careful. As much as I want to look after the crayfish's health or the fish's health when I go to wet my hands and whatnot, I refuse to uh, put my life in danger for the sake of a fish or a crayfish. So I got down as close as I could and just gave her a gentle little lob back in the water. I've just gone to check the bait on the long rod and I was snagged and I snapped it. I'll rig it back up as quickly as I can and get it back in. Right, I've just re-rigged my long rod and I've put a larger sinker. This is one of the the signature series, the Robbie Alexander signature series sinkers that were made for me by Matt Thurling and his sons. Now I'm putting a bigger one on because I've decided I'm going to cast out a bit further. I'm going to go right out in the current. It's after seven o'clock, I think it's not far from sunset. Come on fish. Surely the channel's good for one more fish. <laughs> and got him. Yeah, please be a yellow belly. I not feel like too bad a fish. It's not a, uh, I think it's a carp. Just about to take my mouth and say it's not a carp, I don't think. It's certainly uh, got all the characteristics of a big carp. <laughs> First one being that it's very big. I've got my thumb on my drag here so I can just let it go whenever I want. Gotta watch this other rod here as well, it'll get put in the drink if I'm not careful. A bit like a carp, it took off like a carp. Didn't look that big, but it's certainly proving to be, it's big, certainly proving to be quite a challenge to land. Wouldn't mind pulling this other line out actually, just for a couple of minutes. Let's see if I can do that before I get into strife. <laughs> right. That might just make it a bit easier to land this. That is a big carp. Not certainly not the biggest, but it's in the gotta be up in the mid to high 60s. Can I stand here? That is a huge carp. Huge mungus. But at first, when I first hooked it, it didn't feel this big. It felt like maybe a 40 centimetre yellow belly. I thought, yes! It's not even all that, wouldn't it? No, it's not mid 60s. Probably mid 50s. It's just fighting a lot. I've got a lot of, a lot of stamina. Oh. Oh, it's pretty large. I just want to get it in so I can get my line back in because it's twilight. It's my favourite time of the day, the best time of day to catch a yellow belly. Right, come on, come on. Come on, big old carpio. Look how he's tiring out. Looks like I can stand there, but I can't. Just the grass overhanging that ledge. Right, I'm going to get in this time. Come on. Oh. Proving to be harder than I thought. Come on, 
straight into the net, into the net, into the net, and oh, into the net. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. <laughs> I'm down on one knee here. I'm not gonna ask it to marry me. Oh, come on, so close. But now I've got it. Got him. Big, heavy, and I wanna get me line back in. I'm gonna guess 63. 61. Uh, 62. Not the fattest carp ever, but yeah, put up a bit of, give me a bit of curry. Right, I've got to bait up my long rod. So I'm going to put a couple of fresh jam jack rams on both rods. Fish for the next 15 minutes or so of light with fresh worms on both rods. Give myself the highest chance possible of catching a decent fish. Like a yellow belly. Well, that was a fair old commotion. I'm pretty puffed. I was up and down and up and down on one knee, back up again. Anyway, this is the last hurrah. I've only got about a quarter of an hour of daylight left. Fresh worms on both rods. I love you, I love you, I love you with mighty. I wish my pyjamas were next to your nighty. But don't be mistaken and don't be misled. I mean on the clothesline, not in the bed. My pop used to say that to me when I was a kid. <laughs> he was a very funny man. <laughs> Isn't it amazing when you're fishing how the, the strong wind can just drop right off, the waves can die right down, and you don't even notice? How long has it been this calm for? When I got here, there was huge big waves coming up the channel. Now it's quite calm. Don't know when that happened. Too busy paying attention to my rods, waiting for the next nibble. come a bit closer so I can see what it is. I don't think it's a brown falcon. It could even be a goshawk or a sparrowhawk. It's just flying along under the bridge there trying to catch those swallows. I've had an absolutely wonderful time fishing in the channel here this afternoon. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it half as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you all very much for watching. And I just snapped that line because it was snagged.